All right, welcome everybody to a different segment of the post game show. Uh, as I promised on the Sports Maven, when you tuned in this morning, I was on the one with Wayne real quick. I got knocked off for whatever reason. I got my man Mason here with me from Jacksonville to talk about this game. Mason, you brought up a good point. I know you're a big Redskin guy. There's two great come from behind wins in two nights for you, correct? A rare weekend. Uh, for most Washington football team and Maryland fans, two games that uh, usually that section of the Maryland fans uh, don't really get. A Terps win at the last second and a football team uh, comeback win from last night. But both um, both encouraging as kind of new era's kickoff for, for both of those two uh, football teams. Well, you know, I thought this was a huge win for Loxley. Uh, it, just, it just seemed like we outmanned the other team so bad. But it is tough to win on the road. But this game was over. This game was absolutely over if they get that next touchdown. The other and team. Bruce, was- I agree with you. And I think a lot of the Terps uh, laying the points uh, betters agree with you on that one there. Everyone <laughs> thought Maryland was going to roll. Uh, Maryland's seven point favorite disappoints a lot. They were picked almost every site had Maryland as uh, one of the plays of the weekend on the spread. But one thing that I have to point out with you, and I pointed out on the Young Turks podcast this last weekend, was to me, this was the game for Coach Loxley. You know, you can point to a win over Iowa or a win over Penn State, but this was the game. Maryland has not won. They have not beat Temple. They didn't beat UCF under DJ Durkin. They have not won this game to have the undefeated record at the big game until possibly this year, but you still have to take care of business next week. This has to be that wake up call where you say not every game's easy. You can't overlook the next opponent week by week, set that standard. And I'm pretty sure Loxley behind closed doors will tell his team. They did not meet that standard. They're trying to set this week. They should have won this game by more, but a win's a win. You'll take it. You'll move on. You know, mistakes. I made a few. I mean, the, the, the Terps made so many mistakes. We can't even go into it. A targeting foul, Another near targeting foul. I will tell you one thing about the uh, Terps tonight. They were hitting and they were hitting hard. They played with a fury tonight. And wow, I don't know how many guys will be out for Illinois next week. They injured the quarterback, the first string running back, who's pretty darn good. The second string running back. They were guys were lying down all over the field. But uh, I thought it was a great game for Dante Demas. I didn't see him drop a ball. I saw him caught some tough ones. He casually caught the touchdown pass that was called back. But when you sit down and analyze it, that they had a touchdown that was called back on the way to a comeback and still found a way to do it. You got to give all the credit in the world to number three. I thought he was simply spectacular tonight. And yeah, it seemed like he was out of sync for a little bit. 32 for 43, 350 yards, one TD, and no interceptions. All right. And, and a nice first run. The road game. Yes. Well, you know, and, he, and he had road games last game. year. I mean, you know, and he didn't play that great on the road either. Yeah, with no fans. So, first game with the fans back. And I thought Illinois had a little bit of an underwhelming crowd to me. Uh, they did get their students out. So, credit to them. I think that as time goes on, He'll play like he does at home. He'll step up in the pocket. He'll work through his progressions more than he did tonight. But still, he puts up a ton of yards. He makes the plays when he has to, and they win the game. Now, for Maryland, I think one of the big concerns going forward has to be finding ways to establish a tempo when the first scripted drive does not work. Um, You know, they really didn't open up the middle of the field, which is one of their keys to every game they play until really late in the game. They weren't running the ball well between the tackles, and – I still think one of the big question marks is who is your ace running back? Who's getting the ball when you need a yard right now? It's fleet Davis. I can't really see that working deep into the big 10 play. Well, he's going to be the guy. I mean, I don't think number four has got it. uh, The the ability of fleet Davis. Uh, I'm not sure who else are the backups or whatever, but I think it's going to be him as long as he's healthy, but look, he fumbled. It happens. I, you know, Lamar fumbled last week. Everybody does, but this was a fumble that turned the game around, but, Again, I asked the question, 38 seconds left. How much do you worry about Petrino? I mean, I, now, this guy is not consistent at all. Yeah, I gave my thoughts on this uh, on, on the other segment 
And, but I'll say it again, Michael Oxley, Bruce, is going to trust his guy. Petrino is his guy right now. Whether they have another kicker, they're going to take a look at it. And I like that. And Mike's the kind of guy that's going to trust his player and say, hey, we believe in you under X number of yards. We're in that range. It's all you, buddy. Taps on the helmet. Go out there and win us this game. And he did. He came through when it mattered, although it was only a 32-yard field goal. They must have wanted him to kick from that left hash mark. They did. I thought – I thought that Tua, I mean, Talia was just going to run five yards over and plot it down in the middle of the field, but mm-hmm. he didn't. They actually pushed the ball to the left. Yes, and I believe, uh, I've seen some stats floated around, his kicks, missed kicks are all from the right hash. Uh, from the middle of the field and from the left is where he likes the ball, the left uh, being the preference for Petrino right now. Uh, it is one of those things that if this team's going to make a push and is going to be in some close games, you do have to worry about. It's like one day this guy can hit a 50 yarder, but you never know kick by kick. I think he's got a nice range, but you just don't know. There's no certain distance for him. And that's the difference between a decent kicker and a good kicker. Look, this won't be the first game where the game, come, the game comes down to his foot. You know, I think Maryland's going to win more games than most people thought. And they're going to have games that they lose because maybe they don't get that kick done. But uh, all is said and done, it was a great win for the Terps. They're 3-0. and And look, I don't care how you look at it. I was talking to a few guys before the game today. Loxley got, has one goal right now, and that's the win next week. But it's to get that six wins and get to a bowl. Not when mm-hmm. you're 2-3 and three and there's nobody playing. They legitimately get to a bowl with six wins and hopefully get there with seven or eight wins, which would be fantastic. But uh, you get 4-0, and you're 1-0 in the conference. It's a game, conference play, you have to win. And they did. All right, it's mm-hmm. uh, probably their, I'm not going to say their easiest game on the road, but their most winnable game on the road this year. They also go to Rutgers, and uh, that should be, but I think Rutgers is a better team in this. I was yeah, not. I would agree with you from what we've seen so far. Rutgers doesn't look too bad this year. Pretty uh, similar game that they played last week against Syracuse to the one that Maryland played tonight. Um, yeah, looking ahead, Penn State next week, you just got to win this game uh, and move on to the next one, which sets up what should be a big crowd uh, night game against Iowa. And you'll see where you are there. You know, the Hawkeyes uh, are a really good football team, but those are the games that Maryland wants to play in front of the big crowds at night. And it's another one. Uh, that hopefully this time they stay in because we all know what happened last time. They had a big uh, home game at night. Uh, defensively, I was a little disappointed with the way a team that didn't seem to have any offense was able to move the ball in the in the uh, second half. But, wow, when Maryland put its mind to it, they literally pushed the other team in defeat. I mean, they just stay, – and the, throwing the ball to the tackle was hysterical. I mean, I don't know what the quarterback was thinking about, but – I think he got tired of getting sacked and he was about to get uh, loaded on. I learned a new thing now about uh, a chop block with two people. They called Mm -hmm. it twice today. You couldn't get mad, but they took away a touchdown from Maryland. I think it's an idiotic call. Uh, It neither play looked like it was a penalty or a chop block. You know, I always thought a chop block was when you hit a guy like low in the legs from behind or whatever. But, uh, hey, while I got you here, I gave my predictions on the air today. I'll just run a few by you, okay, on, on the games this weekend. First of all, who do you like in the PLL championship with the Whip Snakes playing uh, chaos again? Well, I like the Whip Snakes, Bruce. Uh, I, I love their team mentality. There's a lot uh, written about that this week in the lacrosse world. Uh, got to roll with the Whip Snakes. It's going to be a four in a row. So, uh, for Wait, the Whip as Snakes, a goalie, three in a row three in a row. They only been in the league for, I mean, the league has only been in existence for three years. You know, it's funny as a goalie, Kyle Burnlor, one, a guy who you love, you know, him Mm -hmm. and you followed him, but in the middle of the year, he slumped bad. They brought in Brian Phipps, the old guy, and he turned it on right away. Uh, Did that shock you that they gave up on Burnlor, but he was so bad for a couple games. Yeah, it really did. Uh, he's generally the best in the game. I mean, Blaze Re- Reardon tonight uh, wins the MVP of the league. Uh, but Burnlor just wasn't getting it done. The team needed to change. It was a lot of different guys, a lot of injuries for the Whip Snakes this year. A lot of those guys are back now. But Phipps came in. You know, Brian Phipps was one of the best goalies in the MLL 
I was surprised to see him kind of on the waiver wire teetering in and out of rosters. I thought he would have came the starter for the Redwood, Redwoods earlier this year, uh, but he ends up on the whip stakes and he's playing in the championship game. Yeah, for sure. And uh, there, there's not a nicer guy in the world than Brian Phipps, a very good friend of mine. So I'm hoping he gets the uh, job done. But Reardon's been playing great. He's doing a lot of talking that they're going to win. And uh, they've improved their team from last year when they added Josh Byrne. But this late addition of Gutterding from Duke was a big move for the Whip Snakes. And uh, I think they'll win. I, win. I think it'll be a close game, as it always is. Yeah, uh, expecting a huge crowd at Dowdy Field. Are they really? Yeah. Huh. I'm definitely going to that one. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. It's at noon. And uh, the uh, the games tomorrow in the Big Ten, Purdue at Notre Dame. Purdue's getting seven points. Who would you bet in that one, uh, Mason? I like the Irish in that one. I think they have a bounce back performance from last week. Uh, tight game against Toledo, but not like what I've seen from Purdue so far this year. And how about Auburn and Penn State? Penn State's lane. I, I like Auburn. I, I do like Auburn. I do too. Uh, on the too. money line for this game. I don't really think you need to take the points. I don't like Sean Clifford. Do not like the way the Penn State quarterback is playing right now. They don't have much of a star running back like they've had in the past with Miles Sanders and Saquon Barkley. Uh, Jahan Dotson's the entire Penn State offense. I think Bo Nix and the Tigers, who have played in some big-time environments like the whiteout, uh, will come in there and roll. Uh, Cincinnati laying forward at, I, at IU. Who you like? Uh, I like Cincinnati. I think that team's really tough. Gave Georgia a run for their money last year. Great quarterback play. Penix, not too good so far this year. Wouldn't be surprised uh, if a couple early interceptions land him on the bench against the Bearcats. Uh, so far, we're in agreement on everything, except I like Purdue to cover that game. Bama and Florida, 14 and a half. I can't yeah, go I against Yeah, going to this game down here. Uh, Bruce, get in price uh, for Alabama and Florida and Gainesville this week. $215 a ticket. Uh, a little too steep for my budget, if you will. Uh, I do not like the Gators. I think Alabama uh, wins big. You know, like uh, Donald Science always says, when the elephant plays the ant, bet the elephant every time. I love Alabama in that game. In the pros, I ask you about the big one this weekend. Nobody in the world's picking the Ravens. I mean, nobody. Ravens have so many injuries, Mason, that it's unbelievable. What they do have going for them, it's their first home game with the crowd in two years. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. Now, Kansas City didn't look that great against Cleveland. They really didn't. And Kansas no. City, look, they were exposed last year against Tampa. You could put any kind of rush on Mahomes and they make him ordinary. Okay. He's a great, great quarterback. He's better than Lamar. But I want to tell you something. He can't evade and he can't run like Lamar. All right. So, if the Ravens can get to them any way, shape, or form, they have a chance. Nobody's given the Ravens a chance. What do you think at three and a half? I like Kansas City at three and a half. Uh, I think that Mahomes. You know they're you know, laying three and a half. Right? Yeah, yes. Okay. I like them laying three and a half. Um, I think Mahomes will pick apart the defense well enough. If a guy like in my key player, Bruce, is Marcus Peters, uh, him being out for this game and out, uh, for that extended period of time. I just don't think the Ravens have the secondary pieces. I'm thinking, um, as far as defense, Baltimore is one guy short. Uh, I was impressed with what Lamar was able to do with all the injuries on offense and and kind of what seems to be a, just a piece-together team at this point. It's hard to even pick out one position group. But, uh, I think the Ravens are going to surprise a lot of people with what they're able to do with the injuries. I just don't think teams like Kansas City is exactly what they're prepared for but would give them a chance late season if they can find their way into the playoffs. It, it's going to be a tough road. Ronnie Stanley's out now. Uh, they're going to have to move Villanueva, who had just a horrible game last week at right tackle. I don't tackle. think Villanueva's a horrible player. Um, I think he's going to put it together. He's a veteran guy. He's just on well, what, he's better at left maybe tackle. his second team. He's better at left tackle than right tackle. He never was a great right tackle tackle for Pittsburgh and then this, this guy Max Crosby made him look like he didn't exist Max Crosby's a stud uh and you know he proved it so uh a couple of the other games I'll just run down real quick that I think are tough picks Bengals get three and a half at Chicago I like the Bears I've always been a big Bears better um and Bears game picker because 
the defense for Chicago has been stout for so many years. I don't think they looked terrible the other night against LA. Uh, I like Chicago did not like what I saw from Cincinnati. My pick of the week, Bruce Cardinals lay the points against the Vikings. Minnesota looked terrible last week. Yeah. I, I picked that as four and a half points. Now I have a theory I'll run by you. After last year, the beginning of this year, every time a team is over 10 points, I'm going with the dog. This week, you got three of them. You got Houston. How in the world is Cleveland worthy of laying 12 and a half against anybody? Not exactly sure, especially with the week that Tyrod had last week, given how bad Jacksonville is still a big game from Tyrod Taylor. Right. 12 and a half points there. Tampa laying 12 and a half against Atlanta. Look, Tampa's a better team, but they sure look beatable last week. They certainly, you know, their defense, look, they gave them the script last week. All right. Dallas gave them the gave every team the script on how to beat that Tampa defense. And that's those quick passes to the outside, cut out their pass rush so it's not effective. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, and the other big spread, what's the other big spread? Uh, so I'm, I, I like the Falcons there. And I thought there was another 10 and a half spread. Maybe the, oh, yeah. Jacksonville against the Broncos. No, that's only four and a half. And I like Jacksonville or five and a half. The Lions are 10 and a half at Green Bay. Green Bay, I'm telling you, Aaron Rodgers ruined that team. He ruined the team. You know, he did not want to be there. Everybody hates him. Everybody on that team has to hate him. All right. Because he's such a jerk. And, I, you know, I wouldn't lay 10 and a half points uh, betting on Green Bay ever. And uh, I had one more crazy game to ask you. Now I forgot. But, uh, Let's let's summarize this game. We have to be real happy. We have to be real happy that it worked out for Maryland. Three and zero coming home to Kent State. I'm not. I thought today's game was going to be a walkover that we win by 21 or something, but it wasn't. I think we will next week. I don't think Kent State can match up with us. I don't know anything about them. But Wayne predicted four and zero in the beginning of the year. It looks like he'll be right. Uh, any final comments, Mace? No, not too many, but a good night for Turp Nation, a win that we haven't seen in a long time. And uh, one of those that you look to build on, these are the wins that Maryland needs uh, in their quest to six games. And uh, looking forward to what should be a big home game uh, on October 1st. Without question. Real quick, Eric Bieniemy, the Chiefs offensive coordinator, Urban Meyer, and James Franklin are the names mentioned for USC head coach. I think the enemy is going to wind up taking the job. Franklin's not going anywhere. All right. I don't believe unless, you know, Penn state plays his way out of it, but urban Meyer ridiculous. That's it. The, the money he's making. Mm. It's just, it's just stupid. It really is yep. stupid. And it's a detriment to him to have to deal with that. But the enemy, does he wait for a head coach or does he take this kind of a job? I think he takes this kind of job. I think this job is very appealing, at least in my book. Yeah, it's a chance to be part of one of the premier college football programs uh, in the country in a place where if you do well, they're not going to fire you. And and I think that there's some uh, attraction there for a guy that that probably feels like he should already be an NFL head coach. So go ahead and give it a run in the college game. Uh, I tend to agree with you. And Mason, that's going to wrap it up for this special edition of the Sports Maven that I know people tuned in for. Uh, thanks for doing the post game with me. And uh, we'll talk to you probably over the weekend sometime. A big weekend, big games. Uh, looking forward to the Kansas City Ravens game. Ravens go 0 2. You know, most teams don't make it when they go 0 2. All right. The Giants are worried already. 0 2 is tough to come back from. But now that there's 17 games, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> Agreed? Are yeah, you under the weather a little bit? That. Yes. Okay. I hope it's just a cold, right? It is. All it right. is. <laughs> All right. um, yeah, I think that getting out of the 0-2 hole is easier now, but it's a long road for every team. And and, and I think this year is going to have some very odd up and downs. Just, you know, the Saints with their COVID situation and other teams around the league. Uh, already starting to feel some of the, the outside pressures from what's going on in the world right now. So it's a little bit easier to navigate, but definitely going to be a long, long way as uh, with that extra game just seems like uh, 
almost a whole other, another opportunity to rebuild a lot of uh, close division races. All right. I know all my sports favorite fans miss you, Mason. I miss you. And uh, I'm glad we got to do this. That will wrap it up. And uh, Mason, we'll talk over the weekend, buddy. Take care of yourself. Stay in. All right. All right, buddy. Let me stop.